First of all, let me get something straight. My name is Emmanuel Hefley, not Manny. Manny was only my childhood nickname, and I refuse to refer to myself by that name again. Now that I got that out of the way, let me begin by telling you guys a story of why I bought this crappy dollar store journal to begin with. <sighs> you see, I'm kind of a felon right now, and if I ever get caught, this is likely what I'll use to defend myself with. If you knew what had been going on for the last couple of weeks, you would understand. I was thinking about a lot of things yesterday, and after a heavy night of drinking, I was starting to feel pretty numb. The same frustrating question kept repeating my mind over and over again. I took three weeks off of work and went to a state I promised I'd never go back to, and just for this bullshit! I decided I would go over to the cemetery again, except this time, it wouldn't be to burn Frank's grave. I was going to find Greg's. Except, I couldn't find a damn thing anywhere. I even went all out and brought a whole bro torch this time. And here I was, walking in circles, carrying this thing around like some idiot who's just asking it caught. I eventually stopped when I passed my dad's grave for the fifth time, and I just stood there, looking at it. All the times I needed Greg in my life, he was never there for me. I would just be ignored, and every problem I had would lead back to Frank's own doing. And now, here I am, in that same situation. Not even my own brother's grave wants anything to do with me. So, I aim my blowtorch towards Frank's grave, and if you're not burning hell yet, Dad, you are now. Ah, fuck! I forgot to check if the canister was empty. Not even a single flame would come out. <sighs> At least no one saw me doing this. Or at least, that was what I thought. Sir, are you aware that you're committing a serious crime? I panicked and dropped the blowtorch, and the entire ground lit in flames. <sighs> so I guess the canister wasn't empty after all. I looked to one small path near me that wasn't yet completely engulfed in flames, and ran. I ran as fast as I could. I kept running until I knew I was away from that place for good. I looked behind me for a split second and I could no longer see the cemetery. All I could see was a blur of an orange glow. There was also a police station just down the street and there was no doubt in my mind that they saw what happened. It started to sound like someone was chasing me so I kept running until I found my way in the middle of a the road. Then. I noticed someone driving by who looked really familiar. Wait, was that Roderick? Yes, yes, it had to be him. Yeah, m maybe, maybe he could help me get out of the situation. Roderick, Roderick, stop the car. It's me, your brother Emmanuel. Ah, fuck off, Manny. I, I couldn't believe it. He tried to run me over. That piece of shit actually tried to kill me. <sighs> so much for having a loving family. It's no wonder why Greg offed himself. And to make matters worse, it started to rain really hard. Well, at least this meant the fire would clear up. So I got up out of the road and started walking until I was away from all the cars and people. I eventually found myself alone in a dark alley, and I would find that it would lead to a little corner store of a vending machine. A drink was just what I needed right now. I was cold, wet, and could barely walk without limping. But it could have been worse, I guess. At least I didn't get caught, right? There he is! We finally caught him! Put your hands up in the air! Well, fuck. Thankfully, I didn't stay in jail for too long. Bail wasn't cheap, but paying for it was no issue. I don't mean to brag, but... I actually own a pretty successful business in New York, and I had managed to save up at least $20,000 in case of some kind of emergency happened in the future, and it just cost me a small portion of that to bail me out. I wasn't too worried as I waited to get out of there. All I had to do was call my name and give me back my stuff, and then I would be, Oh, no, 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 not him, not him! Well, well, well. Will you look at who it is? Good old Manny Hefley. Uncle Joe got a job here about 15 years ago. 
I forgot all about that. I haven't talked to him in almost a decade and haven't had a reason since then. Uh, he's a smug asshole who has never done anything but talk shit, make smarky comments about everyone and everything. And somehow, having an interact with him was even worse than I expected. So I see how it is. You can afford $5,000 for bail, but you couldn't even pay one small measly dollar to help Frank when he had cancer. Uh, listen Joe, Mom and Roger can't know about this and if you say anything, I'll kill you. Oh, they know what you did. It has been all over the news for the last hour, Manny. Shit. Though, I do wonder what you were doing at the cemetery to accidentally set on fire, but... I better not see you around my family again, Manny. Lighting a candle, Uncle Joe. That's what I was doing in the cemetery. I was simply lighting a candle. With a blowtorch? Yes! What else do you want me to say? It didn't matter if I lied or told the truth. Uncle Joe wouldn't listen to anything I said. And this would just go on and on. But that wasn't what bothered me, however. What really got my nerves was that he wouldn't even let me explain myself. No matter how much I tried to justify my reasoning, it just all went down to, you almost burned down a cemetery, and Frank would still be alive if you actually pay his bills, and you shouldn't have fucking left us like that. Now, those sentences alone didn't upset me, because they were all true after all. But what really infuriated me, and set me off for good, was what he said to me when I was walking out the door. Wait, I still have to give you your empty beer bottle. You piece of shit. It's too bad that you weren't the one who offed himself. The world would be better off losing you instead of Greg. But no, you're not like him. I guess you never learned that the world doesn't actually revolve around you, huh? I stopped walking for a moment and looked around me. And when I saw that no one was looking, I threw that damn ball at Joe's face as hard as I could and made a run for it. Now, to the perspective of someone who's only known about the recent stuff I did, or of someone who's in my family, what Joe said might have seemed justifiable. But listen, if you knew about the other things that happened over a decade ago, you would understand. I continued running until I made my way back to the same alley I wasn't before. Still sore, exhausted, and intoxicated. I didn't try to process everything that just occurred. I hit my Uncle Joe in the head with a glass bottle, and I managed to say out loud through all the panting wheezing, Uncle Joe, a cop, oh no, I'm going to be even more trouble than I was in before, and I knocked him out pretty good too, he fell straight to the ground and looking back, he should have seen that coming years ago. I decided to sit down behind a row of garbage cans, no one's going to find me here. And for a moment, I was alone, away from everything and everyone. The hate and alcohol-driven numbness I was feeling earlier was beginning to wear off, and I started thinking about all the stuff that happened this past week. Man, why did I ever come back to Plainview? All I did by coming back here was dig up something that should have been buried and set on fire years ago. Just like how I feel right now, and... Just like how I felt my entire life, like I've been buried alive in sun fire, except there's no rain to come down and put it out this time. The rain never comes. The rain never comes, and the flame never goes away. It just keeps growing and growing, and destroys a new sector of your life each time it grows. And it's never what you expect to destroy. There's never a way to prepare for it. But just like my old friend Abby would say, at least I have some kind of light that shines. God, I wish she was still here with me. <sighs> now, I'm not religious or anything, but if there really is an afterlife, then I'm pretty sure that I'm going to hell. But you know what the worst part about that is? The worst part about going to hell isn't that I'm going to hell. It's that I know my dad will be there too, and I'll be there with him for eternity. I can't imagine any worse of an outcome than that. Uncle Joe will probably be there too when he dies. <sighs> I began to think about this further when 
I suddenly saw something shiny lying on the ground beneath a bunch of garbage. I picked it up and it was a diamond ring. How did it get here and why does it look so familiar? I stayed at the alley for the rest of the night. I then fell asleep with the ring still clutched in my hand. Something about it just felt so comforting. I started to dream peacefully of old memories. Memories of my early childhood before it turned to a train wreck it is now. And for the first moment in so long, all the warmth and comfort came back to me. I had forgotten what it was like. The warm, tender feeling of security and affection. The feeling that you were loved and that everything would be okay no matter what happened. I forgot what it was like to feel these things. <sighs> I forgot how much I longed for them to come back. Silly bear yawning, silly bear sad, silly bear sleeping, silly bear glad, the end. But that dream would quickly ascend to a nightmare, because with the past also comes the future, and with the future comes a reality that rips every last thread of those feelings you had away from you. Get the fuck out of here right now! Get the fuck out of here right now! Get the now. fuck out of here right now! Get the now. fuck out of here right now! Get the fuck out of here right now! Get the fuck out of here right now! Manny, you got an Evan Math again? How can you keep making these same mistakes? You're so smart at home, but it's like in school you don't even try. Uh, I I'm really trying, Dad. I, I really am. I, I promise. Really? You're trying, huh? But these grades don't look like it. Do you know what the word try even means, you idiot? And before I knew it, my nightmare took me back to something that happened when I was around seven. That was when I got reminded of something that I really didn't want to remember. Hey, Dad! Hey, Dad! I got an A on my math test today. Can you believe it? D Dad? You think I wouldn't have found out? It's a disgrace calling you my own son. I never did end up showing that test to him, and I never got another A in math after that either. Sometimes, I do wonder if it had anything to do with me not trying hard enough, but another part of me knew he's the reason. Oh god, it's like I can still hear him screaming from all those years ago. Like I can still hear what everything sounded like. The objects being thrown, my brother's cries, the sound of the belt. <sighs> It all keeps repeating my head and it just won't stop. It just keeps echoing my mind over and over again, louder and louder until it's deafened me completely and I'm on the floor, unable to move. It had gone to the point where I was lying in a fetal position, my hands over my face, continuously begging for it to stop. Please make it stop. No, I can't take it anymore. Oh, I would rather be anywhere else than he have to live through that memory again. Anywhere else. I would even prefer to be dead and, and burning in hell just like my dad. Anything. Just, just please, for the love of God, make it stop. Everything suddenly went silent. I opened my eyes again and... Oh, shit. Where am I? Am... Am I in hell? And it would turn out that I wasn't alone. <laughs> oh, you know exactly where you are, Manny. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I made a mistake wishing for the whole burning hell like my dad thing. No, this isn't what I wanted. This is my worst fear, and I don't know what was more horrifying. The fact that he looked exactly the same as he did in that memory, or that my worst fear had come true. But what I did know was that I had to get out of here, and fast. So I tried to run away from him, but it was no use. How does it feel to be in hell, Manny? How does it feel to be dead and have no one in your life miss you, huh? No one is here for you, Manny. No one is ever going to be here, and you'll never be anything but ignored. Just like how I was to you. I didn't realize this was all a horrid nightmare I would eventually wake up from. It all felt so real. Too real. It felt like I was stuck in this place for good. And as much as I wanted to stand up to my own father, my worst enemy, and as much as I wanted to inflict everything I could on him and express my true feelings for him, what I really thought of him, 
I somehow found myself unable to say anything, and I couldn't even open my mouth. I didn't feel strong or invincible, like how I imagined I would feel when I envisioned standing up to him years later. Instead, I just felt small and helpless, just like I felt when I was seven. <laughs> Look, Dad, I know none of your sons turn out the way you wanted them to be, and I know when it comes to your expectations, I turn out to be the worst of all three of them, but believe me, I've tried. Before we had that falling out, I've tried everything I could to make you happy, to actually make you proud of me, but somehow, he never saw it. He never saw my efforts as anything more than disappointments, so I gave up on trying. I left you in your own fantasy away from the reminder of a disappointment that was me. But I guess I did the wrong thing by doing that to you, because now, here I am, in a literal hell. Nothing I ever did is good for you, is it, Dad? Do you want to see what you did by ignoring everyone who loved you? Do you know what happened to them? I'll show you! I'll show you what happened to them! You killed him, Manny! That's what you did! An overwhelming feeling of dread took over me as I read the names that were on those two graves. I knew that whatever he had in mind for me couldn't be anything good, but still unable to say anything, all I could do was stare at those two graves until their names burned into my mind, leaving a permanent mark. <sighs> An unbearable sense of guilt began to grow inside of me the more I looked at them. Seeing my own brother's name was bad enough, but then I saw... I saw her name, and when I read that name again, it it took everything I had to not completely break down. I still don't like talking about what happened to my old girlfriend, Abby. She died a long time ago, and I'll leave it at that. I try to act like I've moved on from what happened, and act like my life is different now. But I would be lying if I said that I didn't wish she was still here with me every day. She really did mean everything to me, but my dad never saw her as anything more than an enemy and a distraction to any chance I could have at succeeding in school. I don't think you ever truly understand the pain I felt from losing her. I don't think anyone in my family really understood each other, for that matter. Maybe if they did, this wouldn't have happened and Greg would still be alive. But just like always, my dad tried to make it my fault and... Maybe he was right this time. You could have prevented Greg from offing himself. You could have helped him, but you didn't, did you? Of course not. You just chose to keep on ignoring his existence and let him do it without anyone stopping him. There's nothing you can do about that now, Manny. He's dead. You killed him just like how you killed Abby and just like how you killed me. Is this the person you'll be known as? But this is what will become of you if you keep on hurting the people you love. I watched as my dad walked towards my own grave, my own grave, reserved for me in hell. It was as if this was what my whole life was destined to, as if there was really no escape from the perpetual misery I've been put into for the last two decades after all. This was my hell, and there was no way to avoid it. I then began to notice a really familiar smell lingering in the air, but... I couldn't quite identify what it was. It drove me crazy as I tried to figure it out. It was almost too familiar, but oh, my face turned pale when it suddenly occurred to me what it was. Oh, fuck! He has a match! Do you really think people still deserve to love you after what you've done? <laughs> you've treated everyone you've known like shit and desert everyone who had the slightest connection to you. What makes you think that you deserve their love, huh? No, 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 no. You don't deserve love from anyone, not even from the person who loved you the most. After staring at my burning grave for what seemed like an eternity, I looked back to my dad, the person who caused everything to be this way in the first place, the person who was responsible for my misery, I just looked at him, then the eyes, hoping that it would at least mean something to him. But he probably didn't even notice. But that was when I saw him drop another light match. I'll do Abby's grave this time. 
And that was when I finally managed to say something. No, 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 please! You can't do that! She doesn't deserve it! Thankfully, the grave didn't catch on fire, but something else did, however. <laughs> wow! I guess you've never learned that the world doesn't actually revolve around you, huh? I guess you've never learned that the world doesn't actually revolve I guess you've never around learned you. that the huh? world doesn't I guess you never I guess you never learned that the world doesn't actually I guess you never learned that the world doesn't I guess you never learned that the world doesn't actually There you are. I finally found you. Emmanuel, what are you doing here? Emmanuel! Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. I go grocery shopping for five minutes. And next thing I know, you're on the news for being arrested. It's like I can't even leave you alone for just one moment. And, and have you been drinking? Jesus! What effect do you think this is going to put on our business? Ah, it's like I always have to put out your fires for you. Oh, shit. I totally forgot about the hotel I was staying in or my friend Weasley was with me. I didn't say anything as I got into Weasley's car. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Because all I could think about that nightmare. I don't know how to describe the way it made me feel, but it didn't feel good. I was still holding on to the ring when I woke up. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I wish I never picked it up. I took another look at it, and how could something give me such warm and nostalgic feelings yet also bring me so much pain? How could something seem so distant from what I know, yet so familiar? I didn't understand it. I continued to gaze at it, almost as if I was hoping to get some kind of answer from it, even though I knew I wouldn't. It wasn't enough to distract me from the thoughts of that nightmare. It overtook every other little thought that could have been running through my head at the time and haunted me the more I could to think about it. And the worst part about it wasn't even the nightmare itself. It was what it made me realize. You know, after my dad died, after the person who brought nothing to my life but absolute goddamn misery died, I thought I would have gained at least some sense of freedom or relief, but I don't feel that way. Instead, I feel trapped. I feel like there have been... More chains put on me now instead of them being lifted. I'll never get closure. Because the memories my dad gave me have opened up a wound inside of me so large that it's beyond the point of ever closing back up. It's filled with nothing but pain and, and emptiness. I can't mourn because with such an open empty wound inside of you, there is nothing to mourn for. All I can do is... Continue to suffer in this hell that he put me in. Because that's what my dad is. He's my hell. He may be dead now, but the hell that he's brought me into will live on forever. And it's one thing to know that your life is a living hell. It's one thing to know that each day of your life for the past 28 years has been a living hell. But what really crushes you and makes you question hope for good it's a realization that there's no way out, even after it seems like the nightmare is over. I feel like everything in my life just leads back to this. It all leads back to my dad. Yeah, there's my brothers and the rest of my family too, but it's my dad who's the cause of all of this. He's the reason why my life has never been good. He's the reason why I've never been happy. And during the very few moments in my life that I actually do recall being happy... He did everything he could to take that happiness away from me. I used to see my past and my future as two different things that I could easily separate. But now, they don't seem any different from each other at all. I don't know if I have a future. I feel like my future will just be a prolonged version of my past that never ends. A past that is controlled by my dad. I don't know if I can get away from that. I don't know if I can get away from the memory of my dad, and that's what terrifies me the most. There, there has to be more to life than this. There has to be more to me as a person than just a victim of my dad's resentment. This, 
This can't be all I'll ever be. This can't be all my life will ever be. Uh, there has to be a way out somehow. There has to be. I need someone I can talk to about this. Those thoughts are too much for me to handle on my own. I need someone to tell me that things can change. That they will change. Because as of right now, the mere idea of that seems impossible. But I know it can't be. Things will have to change eventually, right? It can't just be like this forever, right? Uh, um, maybe I can talk to Weasley about this. He's been my closest friend since elementary school, after all. If anyone knows me better than I do, it's him. Hell, we practically moved to the same state just so we could be together and start our own business. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you'd be supportive. Wait. Has he been talking to me this whole time? I just don't know what to do with you anymore. I can't believe what you just did. Do you even think about the repercussions are or how this will make people see our business? This isn't okay, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, are you listening to me? Emmanuel! Emmanuel! God, I swear it's like you tune me out on purpose sometimes. You didn't even hear anything I said, did you? Uh, I'm sorry, were you talking to me? What were you saying? Uh, never mind. The flea market is tomorrow morning. You pay the manager so we can set up our booth, right? Don't tell me before about that as well. Also, those bills were due. I only caught the last part of what he said before, but the mention of the flea market brought something to my mind that I completely forgot about. You see... Every year in Plainview, there's this flea market held in the old building where the Tendles Cuddles Preschool used to be. And part of why we went back here in the first place was so we could promote our business somewhere else. And that reminded me, oh crap, I didn't pay the manager. Shit! I was supposed to do that yesterday before it was too late and what bills was he talking about? I don't remember having to pay any... All right, the electricity bills, so our business would still be running when we were gone. You forgot, didn't you? Please don't tell me you forgot. Oh, shit. Ah, don't you fucking tell me right now that you forgot what I've been urgently asking you to do for the last two weeks. Don't tell me you forgot about that. Weasley, I'm sorry. No, don't even start that. I'm so fucking mad at you right now. I, I don't even want to talk to you. Please, Weasley, just let no, me... No, don't talk to me. Don't fucking talk to me. I've been at the flea market for an hour now, and it's been practically dead so far. But maybe that's for the better, I tell myself. After all, the last thing I need right now is some random person to recognize me as a guy who was on the news last night for almost burning down a cemetery, but I should probably be worried. I mean, it typically moves pretty slow in the morning, but now it's almost 12, and we haven't even had a single person buy anything from us, much less approach our booth in the first place. But on the bright side, the manager was fine with us paying for a booth at the last minute since it had been so empty, but now... I'm starting to question if coming here to sell a product was even worth it, let alone coming to Plainview at all. Ah, I should have never come back to Plainview. Everything is shitty here, and when I say that, I mean everything. And the shit that happened to me this past week only proves that. <sighs> Weasley's still pretty pissed at me, and I don't think the ways things are going here right now is making that any better. And... The only real communication we had with each other today was when we stopped at a local 99 cent store before heading here. I told him I was going to buy this crummy journal. I noticed it was just lying there on the floor in plain view, like it had been knocked off the shelf it was placed on. I was still trying to process everything that happened the night before and when I saw the journal, I saw my chance. I needed some way to get these thoughts out of my head. Some way to set my mind at ease from these thoughts that were slowly suffocating me to the point where I couldn't even breathe freely and calmly. I could feel the anger seething through me, latching onto every last nerve in my body, 
doing everything it could to make sure I couldn't escape from its demeaning presence. I wanted to explode. I wanted to take every perceivable object in front of me and light it on fire, watching it burn until it turned ashes, completely unrecognizable from the ambiguous thing it once resembled. Just like how I can't resemble my life is anymore, but I couldn't do that. I know I couldn't do that. All I could do was sit here and continue to write this pointless drivel. And now, it's like I can't stop. My mind feels like it's going a mile a minute. Yet, it also feels frozen in time. Like none of this even matters. Yet, it also matters more than anything else. I'll admit, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if this helps, but at least something to distract me from the loathsome hellhole I live in. It's been an hour I've been riding here to pass the time. An hour I've managed to gather all my thoughts together in, yet I still feel just as helpless and clueless. Every once in a while, after starting a new sentence, I would turn my head and look back over the way Weasley was, and he would just glare at me with the most pissed off look on his face, and every time I would do this, he would begin to look more and more pissed off. I don't think he's happy with the lack of people we've had so far, or that he ended up being the one who had to pay electricity bills after they were almost a week due. It doesn't help that we've practically made zero money today. I took the diamond ring out again and placed it over my palm. I didn't do anything with it, but just decided to look at it for a moment. If I were to sell this thing and it turned out to be worth a copious amount of money, would that make up for what I've done? Would that make Weasley forgive me? Well, I know it'd definitely make up for the lack of money we received today. I examined it closer, and... It gave me the same familiar feeling, that same comforting yet enthralling feeling. I can't fully bring myself to describe it. It seemed to take me back to a different time. A time when my life somehow didn't feel like an eternal affair of sorrow. A time where things felt like they were at ease. I don't know what it was that made my life so different back then. I don't remember, but I do know that this ring is likely the closest thing I'll have of achieving that feeling ever again. And just having it by me feels so nice, so warm, so elevating. Should I really sell this? Part of me wants to so I can make up for the way I fucked up yesterday and regain Weasley's trust, but another part of me is Desperately streaming inside, begging for me to hold on to it, no matter what I do. The problem is, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to have to figure it out soon, likely sooner than I wish. I would turn around and look back at Weasley again, but I know he won't be getting happier anytime soon. I've noticed Weasley slowly change over time. It is so unnoticeably different than the person I knew just a couple of years ago. He's begun to act less like a friend towards me and more like an authority figure. For the last few months in particular, it seems like he's only gotten more irritable and stressed out about anything that crosses his path. I do around the same amount of work as him, given the partnership we run, and it hasn't gotten any more stressful than usual lately, so... I'm not entirely sure where this change in his behavior came from. I don't know why he suddenly started to be this way, but I think I have an idea. Sometimes, when your life feels so bleak and almost nothing makes you happy, you hold on to the very few things that do for as long as you possibly can, and you just keep holding on to them, tighter and tighter until they're the only things you have that even matter to you anymore. And anyone questioning your happiness about these things turns you to someone else. You begin to feel insulted at questioning and become defensive instead. No longer able to see the perspective of the other side. 
you and the thing you've held on to for so long become one and the same, and everyone and everything else seems to be trying to attack you, trying to make you miserable, when in reality, you're the one who is miserable and trying to attack everyone else. I've noticed this pattern affecting me for the last decade, and recently, I've begun to see it affecting Wesley with his business to a much worse degree. And what hurts the most is that I noticed nothing could truly do about it. I met Wesley when I was in the second grade. Apparently, we had met each other another time before that, but I don't really have any memory of it. I don't really have that many memories of anything before I was five, for that matter. Me and Wesley bonded with each other because we would both get in trouble often, and we were always made to sit against the wall at recess instead of actually being able to enjoy it, so we made the best we could out of it together. We eventually became best friends from this as time went on, doing everything you could possibly imagine together, and here we are. Still together today. I used to wonder if things would have turned out this way if we weren't such bad kids, but now I realize it wasn't because we were bad kids. It was because all we had were each other, and I would be lying if I said that still isn't the case right now. Like I said, Weasley is my closest friend and probably my only friend, but sometimes... I don't know if he understands me. I thought we understood each other when we were younger, but I might not even be right about that when I look back at it now. And lately, I've been starting to get a notion that we're two worlds apart, but I still try to see those two worlds as close enough to where they can still be accompanied by each other in peace, and have been that close for long enough to where it isn't even possible to be questioned. Sometimes, however, it's possible for those worlds to collide. And the moment that happens is when you least expect it. This is what I'm starting to fear the most, especially now, because without Weasley, the only person I have is myself. And I'm scared of that. I can't be stuck by myself. I can't be stuck in my own thoughts. I can't have that happen to me. I really, really can't. Especially not now. After everything that's happened. But the more I begin to think about it, the more I realize how far apart from Weasley I really am. It almost seems like we grow slightly less attached to each other as each year goes by. And it makes the gap that we already have between us feel a lot larger than it was before. Maybe, maybe I actually have been by myself this whole time and I just hadn't realized it yet. Maybe I'm stronger than I think I am. Perhaps I can be completely on my own, even if it's for the rest of my life for all I know. But the thought of it alone still scares me. I just, I just don't know. Speaking of Weasley, I should probably explain why we ended up going back to Plainview in the first place. I can say right now that it wasn't my idea. I should back this up by explaining that I've owned this business with Weasley for about seven years now. He came up with the idea for his business shortly after we got out of high school. When Weasley told me about his plans to move to New York and pursue it in a brand new place, I jumped on board with him almost immediately. Haven't looked back or thought about playing with you since, well, till now that is. We named our business Stringleys as a combination of both of our last names. We build and sell blow torches for a living and as a hands-on person who has always been a rather solid businessman, I really enjoy it. For a larger business, it might be hard for something like this to find a good amount of success, but for a company that's local and mainly certain around New York, we've found that it's been going really well and we've only gotten more people's attention as the years have gone by. Things started to change a bit, however, when Weasley got this phone call last night. Wiz, you busy? 
There's something I've been wanting to ask you. His friend Elisa had called him to let him know that she would be moving from Plainview to New York and was interested in working for us. Now, I knew Elisa from back when we were in Plainview. She's a good friend of ours and she's really savvy when it comes to business related things. Weasley agreed that she would make a perfect fit for our business and that, as friends, we would welcome her to New York. So, he decided that we would go over to Plainview for the first time in years to help her move and visit his family along the way. I can not really relate to Weasley's other reasons for wanting to go to Plainview that didn't have to do with her, but I could see why he wanted to go back. Alicia has visited New York a few times before and has come to see us every now and then, but this will be her first time living here entirely. Also, the annual flea market happened to be happening around the same time as this, and Weasley saw it as an opportunity to promote our company somewhere outside of a local area. Wanting to visit family and old childhood monuments is something I'll probably never get, though that kind of stuff doesn't make me happy. Instead, it just reminds me of all the things from my past life that I always wanted to forget. Except, I can't because when I'm in plain view, it's all right in front of me. I never understood why you want to be around that, but I guess Weasley just has that soft spot for plain view I never had. Things seem to be going smoothly. At least with Alicia planning on working for us, though I wasn't looking forward to going to Plainview, but I was looking forward to seeing an old friend and having our business grow. What I didn't know, however, was that I would be getting a phone call from Roderick around the same time. I picked up the phone, hoping that it would all go well, and that didn't happen. Hey, I just thought I'd let you know that. Dad's cancer has gotten worse than ever, so if you actually give a shit, I would recommend coming down to Plainview if you want to see him alive one more time. Wait, Dad has cancer? Are, are you kidding me right now? I called you the moment we found out, and I've been calling you every week to update you ever since, you little piece of dog shit. Oh, oh my god, is that why it's always going to voicemail? Jesus Christ, Matty! Are you seriously telling me that you didn't even listen to a single one of those? I looked at the number of missed calls on my phone to see that I had almost 800 of them just from over the past year. And they seemed to be from a number of different people, but mainly from Roderick. I guess I had been so involved working my own life in New York that I just didn't notice them. <sighs> I'm... I'm sorry, Roderick. I really am. It's just that with the business and everything, I just, I, I don't know. I, I guess I just got distracted. Don't lie to me, Manny. Ah, I seriously can't believe you. I put so much time and care into doing this. I didn't even have to call you, given you never once answered me back. But I did. I did everything I could to try to reconcile with you after what happened, so you could at least feel like you're part of a family again. But you don't care, you don't care, and you never will. You only care about yourself, you selfish piece of shit. You don't deserve to be my brother. You don't even deserve to have brothers. You don't even deserve to have anyone. I hope you live the rest of your life alone. I hope you stay alone. And no one ever comes to see you when you're in need. Because that's what you deserve. And don't ever talk to me again, you fucking piece of shit. I didn't even get to tell him that I'd be going to Plainview that same week. But at this point, whether I actually wanted to go to Plainview or not, wasn't even a question anymore. I knew... I had to go there anyway, just to spite him. I don't know how right he was when he said I didn't care, but if anything, he made me no longer want to care about anything at all by saying that now. I didn't care what Roderick thought of me. 
I didn't care what dad thought of me. And I couldn't care less what a slice thought any of my family had of me anymore. Either way, I knew that there was only a few well-known hospitals in Plainview. And I was going to prove something to them by coming there. <laughs> and I wasn't only going to prove that. I was going to prove that my business was successful and that reuniting with an old friend would only do me right in the end. And even I wouldn't be able to prove it to them, at least I would to myself. The closer I got to the day we arrived in Plainview, the more excited I became about finally being able to see Elisa again. I don't think me or Weasley have seen her in person at all for at least two years, and the times we have before it had barely been for more than just a couple of days. We're supposed to see her tomorrow. Now, I never got to know Elisa super well, but we've always gone along great during the times we have hung out with each other. In fact, I might even go far enough to say that I've had more fun the last few times I've seen her than I have with Weasley for the last two decades. She just makes me feel really nice. Elisa reminds me that I have a heart during the times where it seems like it the least. Now, I may not be a good person, but at least I have a heart. And she reminds me that I'm actually capable of loving people and caring about them. And that's something I tend to forget pretty often. Sometimes, when I'm fighting inside my head and debating whether I'm a decent person or not, talking to her can actually help a bit. It doesn't exactly silence a thought to my head that persistently seems to shout at me, but it does temporarily ease the pain overflowing inside of me. We seem to have a lot of things in common as well. I know that we're both fast learners when it comes to gaining new skills, for instance, and we have the same mindset when it comes to business management. And she has ADHD like I do, but... None of those things are really impressive or worth pointing out, but they are things I have noticed at least. She seems to really like me for who I am as well, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't like her back. She has hinted to me before that we would make a good couple and has pushed us to start dating in the past, but I just don't think I'm ready for that kind of thing right now. Look, don't get me wrong. She is attractive, and I like who she is as a person, but it seems like every relationship I've been in finds its way to turn itself into turmoil, romantic or not. So far right now, all I've been doing is just sitting here, writing this thing and debating what I should do with the ring. My thoughts keep going back and forth. This ring gives me such a pleasant and comforting feeling. It takes me back to when I was a kid. Back when I was a kid and still loved. It feels maternal. Almost like it gives me a feeling of comfort. The same way a mother gives a feeling of comfort to the child. Something in my life that I can only remember vaguely at best. I thought about it for a while. And I thought about it really, really hard. But then... I remember the other things about my childhood. The things that weren't so pleasant. Like the way my dad treated me as I got older. The way he wanted to be who I wasn't. And the way he treated my brothers. And the more I thought about it, <sighs> the more infuriated me. And the more I began to feel rage over the main memories of what my last life was. I looked down at the ring again. And I thought of the thoughts I had earlier. I ran the same question through my mind of whether I should keep it or not, but now, the answer I had in mind was a different one. Why would I want to keep something that reminds me of my past? Why would I want to keep something that will only remind me of the hell I've been put through and will probably be recovering from for the rest of my life? No, 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 no. Fuck this family! Fuck this ring! Fuck my dad! It's not worth it! They're not worth it! The only thing this ring is worth is the amount of money I could potentially get from it. The money that will actually help me repair my business and my relationship with my closest friend. Nothing else is worth saving. Wait, hey, I just heard someone walk into the building. Ah, it's about time someone approaches our booth. 
We've got almost no buyers in. I've been waiting for... Uh, for... Uh, uh. Oh, shit. And that's Diary Wimpy Kid, Five Name Clive, Part 1. Man, that's a long reading. <laughs> and the best part is... This is just the small tip of the LLB. This is a very long one. We're gonna be here for a while. Anyway... The next reading will be Diary Wimpy Kid Overflowing Part 4. I've been reading your comments and I know a lot of you guys really want that. So, that's what will be next. Also, shout out to Muddy Smoke. At Muddy Smoke, since he's the one who suggested Five Name Clive. And uh, congratulations, your choice won. So, uh, shout out to them. Anyway, I'm pretty tired right now. So, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this reading and I hope you have a good day. Bye.